have to go back and right our original wrongs. <laughs> That right there. Silverado lowering spring. Look at how beefy. It hasn't broken yet. here today for Dan, but it's been fun. Woo! Oh All right, that well that's good. a pretty good morning workout. We're not here for this thing or that thing. We're here for something or else. This thing. Today, we're gonna revive one of the oldest projects at Hoonigan. This predates daily transmission. It predates Dan. It Dan predates Dan. It's so old. It was on network television. How antiquated <laughs> that idea is. Well, anyway, it's this. <laughs> So we don't generally talk about the business end of how these projects come to be. How it usually works, we come up with these crazy ideas and then we go out and we try to find partners who want to see these projects happen. It actually started as a conversation, right? David Borla from Borla Exhaust was on set for This Versus That. Mr. David Borla. From Borla. Borla Exhaust. Not a coincidence. So we were talking about like origin stories of Hoonigan and he happened to mention to us that Borla started very differently than we thought. See, we always thought of Borla as a performance exhaust company. They make exhaust for sports cars and for exotics. So Borla actually started their company by building exhaust for Rolls Royces. In 1978, Elise and Alex Borla were building exhausts for old Rolls Royces. And we happen to have an old 1978 Rolls Royce. Seemed like a perfect match, right? Not a coincidence. More importantly, if you've been watching since the daily transmission days, it's a 78 Silver Shadow. Giant V8 in an old ass luxury vehicle. And a Hydro. Yep, that's sick about it. You've seen this thing sitting up on the rack. We've seen all the comments. We said we'd build it, but we never got around to it. So if it wasn't for David Borla being like, let's do something with that car, it would still be collecting dust on the rack. Do you think when we said let's do something, he thought thousand horsepower, party mobile, four seats, everything like that? No. Definitely not. But it's gonna be sick. It's gonna be sick. It's crazy because Borla started as a business resurrecting Rolls Royces. And just in case you needed yet another synergy, they started their business in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which is the same place Hoonigan started. What? But honestly, we're super stoked to work with Borla. They've been a leader in the performance and stainless steel exhaust industry since literally before I was born. They're family owned and operated, plus made in the USA. And you don't even have to have a super custom build or anything, they probably have an exhaust for you. They partnered with us to build this completely custom ridiculous car. Their bread and butter is like bolt on applications for normal cars that you probably own. You talking to me? So if you only can weld boogers like the three of us, They'll just do it for you. You just bolt on boys. Buy a bolt on yeah, Take it from the bolt on boys. From the bolt on boy crew. So if you were one of those people commenting, saying, please build the Rolls Royce, or you were just secretly pining, hoping that we build the Rolls Royce, go thank Borla. Go to their Instagram and say, thanks for building the Rolls Royce. Because without them, this project would still be dying on the rack. So you guys are probably thinking, this isn't cool. What are you guys talking about? In like a weird hoity-toity British kind of way. So before we get into it, why this car exists is because Brian did a Discovery Channel show with ACP called Car Saviors. Back in the day, Discovery Channel approached us and said, hey, it'd be cool for you to host the show. I don't know if anyone watched it, but we got to keep this. And unfortunately, this has sat on the racks for 2,000 years later. The whole concept of the show was buying cars that didn't matter anymore. Like cars people just didn't give a f about and trying to make them cool again. Pretty well, much this half of your fleet. Documentary of it your life. It wasn't my show idea, but it definitely kind of fit my <laughs> style. And what we figured was, let's just make it a fun shred car. And we put this in it, which is a 6.4 Hemi. And it's probably got like nine miles on it. It's a 392 crate. It's got a T56 behind it. We built this car so long ago that it was acceptable to have 500 horsepower. Now it's gotta have a thousand horsepower. Like Audi daily drivers make 500 to the wheels, you know? It is a common trend for us to build cars, break them, and then don't use them. No, no, mm-mm. 
I refuse. Hell no. This one's a little bit of a different story. We have to go back and right our original wrongs before we can move forward and fix this. New car. year, new us, although We're the year's almost in. over. <laughs> Pandemic, a lot Whatever. of excuses. The quick backstory on this, we just didn't have enough time to finish it. So darn all, original shop dude. Hi, I'm talking. We did the swap in here and we put this whole thing together and this part of it actually worked really well. This part of it was still very Rolls Royce. Rolls Royces are built to be very compliant and cushy, plush. And soft and plush. And that means that when you send 400 some odd horsepower to the rear, it makes everything just tweak. The rear was moving so much inside the that? car that it would cut through the drive shaft. You guys made the most expensive pipe cutter in existence. Yeah. We got a world record. Be the yeah. first time. <laughs> but it's got good guts because it's got a good yeah. transmission. Oh. It's got a Wilwood pedal box. It's already got a handbrake. Oh Full my God. Flintstone style. So there are things like that that we skipped. Floor was rotted out. You can see we just put a plate down. Um, and then the suspension. Vinny, do you even remember yeah, what it was? So big problem with this car, and the reason why we couldn't like just get to it was because like to make this thing really work the way we want it to, it's a huge overhaul. Right now, as Brian said, all the rear bushings are made out of like composite tires. Dude, I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> but the front suspension, KW came through, they helped us out, try to figure out what would work, and Chris Marion put some Frankenstein shit together. Silverado HD 2500 no lowering springs in the front oh, with a okay. KW shock, and then the rear is a seven series shock with like a miscellaneous spring too. So we don't, wait. It's, yeah. <laughs> This is like five years ago. There's like a ton of really weird things in this car. Like for example, the passenger side had reverse thread lugs, which, oh, to which took out. a long time to figure out and a lot of impact <laughs> wrenching <laughs> until we eventually snapped it. <laughs> <laughs> until we eventually they snapped They were trying to take the lugs off with like a 400 foot brake yeah. bar. And then someone's like, what if they're reverse thread? <laughs> These are some custom wheels that we had made back in the day. We're gonna obviously replace those. It's got a blanket for your fuel rail, it's so cute. Yo, know, cause when this motor came out, it was the, <laughs> this was the beginning of Mopar doing crate engines. And this was the first crate engine that Mopar made available out of the new Electra Hemi. It really wasn't the crate, it was just like a motor that came off the factory line. They hadn't actually started the crate program, so they just pulled this off the factory line for us. When you have a discovery show, they'll do crazy shit for you. That's I'm one so, cool part about it. Because this was not an easy engine to fit in here. And uh, luckily... Well, look at those turrets, man. That's gigantic. Look at the size of that. How many <laughs> it looks bolts? looks like a fire hydrant. Can someone Photoshop a dog pissing on it? Sick. <laughs> I should probably explain how this thing got saved from the wreck. There's two places cars go to die at Hoonigan. <laughs> Death Row. And the rack. Anywhere in between that your car might actually get worked on. Yeah. So it either goes to die or maybe yeah. get revived. The top rack at Hoonigan yeah, is basically like a retirement home. It's like, Florida. Go, yeah, it's, it's Florida. Florida. Exactly. Top you rack is Florida. Florida. Wow. Sorry, <laughs> if you're from the East Coast, Florida, and maybe the Midwest too, Florida is where we send our old to die. So the goal for this is to make it a party shredder, right? Like everybody's got cool party shredders. It has four seats. We still have a lot of work to do on this no, thing though to lot. get it. We haven't even started. We, haven't even we started. have so Look much work to do. We Look have started though. He hasn't even done anything oh about this. We have so much work to do. We had to build new tools to work on this car. Who's that Pokemon? Oh my God. Yeah, that'll be next episode. We have so much work to do that we procrastinated just to get through this part of the video and now it's lunchtime. That's why we built that course. <laughs> Soupy. Soupy, what do we got? Dude, there's we got a soup? lot. There's a lot. Like the rear end is it's mangled underneath there. And Brian's like, hey, could we fix it? It's like, no, we can't. We're just gonna have to start over. So the idea is now we have a full Art Morrison setup. Front clip, rear clip. That right there. All right, so we have three options. Option one, leave the stock 6.4. Not an option. Option two, throw a ton of power at the 6.4. Charger, two turbos, something like that, all of the above. Unfortunately, it kind of has like a 600 horsepower ceiling from everything we've been told. So the easy button, because this car is due in like two months, is a hell of a we thing. see how sick these are in really heavy factory cars. Right out the box, this is 707 horsepower. So we don't really need any more. But with but a Maggie, it'd be like 1100. No, we need more. I mean, this is sick. This is a crate motor as ordered from Mopar. It's even got the one. <laughs> with this in there, are we going to keep those little yellow things on the side of the bumper? Oh. oh. All right, so this goes in that, this goes in here. Pretty much bolt on. Yeah. Super, your work's cut out for you. Super, you can get that done. This is yeah. so easy. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. All Let's right. Go. Ready? 
Let's go. Well, what you do in a situation like this is you push it in as far as it goes, and then you just jack from whatever. It hasn't broken yet, so. SEMA 2024. Here we go. Bushing on the turn down? Like I said, the first part of this was done really well. Look at like the way that like Darnell did like the subframe connector and everything. Like, oh, that's really nice. And then they were like, okay, it has to be done tomorrow. We just scratched to get it finished. Look at this. Well, that's from doing a wheel drop. That wasn't an accident, that was just a wheel drop. Yo, and it bolts in through the side and then the rear cover bolts to the subframe. Look at the diff from back here. Huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 bolts. Are they taking this on a stage? Look at that f***ing droop. It's like trophy truck style. Yeah. Look, it's fine. It's fine. Look at how beefy these springs are. Where is the, the frame that we got? Where does that go? Uh, so we basically just plasma cut. Like we start here and we like end here. And then we replace then the whole the thing. Body? You have to make a new one. But we saw it on YouTube once. Dude, it's, it's you don't just bolt the body on top of that no. frame. You have to make floors and stuff? Yes. yes. Why did we do it that way? It's the easy way to do it. Yeah, it's the easy way to do it. Oh, it sounds it. Well, all we gotta ready do four room. bolts. Honestly, I would parts. say we loosen them and then we just stand to the side and you loosen the last one. Let, let me get the wiring harness out. Yeah. All right, we're out. Okay, slowly, slowly. The uh, struts are holding it in, you dipshit. Yes. Sure nice, I was right. take the cap off and then it, it the worst it'll do is what are you trying to do right now Susie? don't worry about it don't worry about it sweetheart yeah i don't know it's still hand built cars like it's kind of it's fine it's normal <laughs> We're making it less shitty. Rolls Royce is the pinnacle of automobiles. You on there? I don't feel like you're in. It's off. It's off. All right, let's do the other side. Lift it up a little bit. There we go. Are we on? Yeah. Yeah, we're on. I don't know what bolt you're on. Didn't do anything. I think I don't think you're on the right bolt. How do you have kids? I have kids. <laughs> I have two nuts, just like this car does. It's not even on, Scato. It is. It is not. Bolt out. Jesus. How f***ing long is this thing? <laughs> well, that's totaled. <laughs> there we go. Alright, other side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, fuel line. Oh yeah, the fuel line. We never did that part. Oh, well, we officially made this into a car. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
All right, I think we're done. I think that's the episode, guys. Cool, let's go do donuts. Ah.